Hey guys, how's it going? Tastefix here. Hope you're doing well. Recently, I've started to use DaVinci Resolve for editing my videos instead of iMovie, and in today's video, I'm going to be comparing the two of them since it's useful to know the benefits and the drawbacks of editing software before you go and switch up your workflow. Like in my other comparison video with Google Chrome vs Safari, I'm going to be splitting this video into categories and then awarding either Resolve or iMovie a point when they do something better. This way, I can base the final summary off of which one has the most points. The categories which I'm going to split the video into are the price, the platform support, the ease of use, the performance, as well as finally the effects that you can do with each of them. So without further ado, let's begin. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the price. When looking for a good editing software, the ones that most likely come to mind are the big boys like Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere Pro, which are very, very expensive to say the least. Luckily, both iMovie and DaVinci Resolve are free to use and neither offer a watered down experience with logos in the corner or free trials or anything like that and this means of course you don't need to worry about feeling guilty if you go and spend hundreds of pounds on an editing software and then feeling like you have to use it because you spent all that money on it. However, just to mention, there is also a paid version of DaVinci Resolve which you can get too, called DaVinci Resolve Studio. This version is instead £299, but don't worry, the standard free version of DaVinci Resolve has very little different to it, and it's also the one that I use because I don't have £299 to spend on editing software. The main difference is to the Studio version is that it has 3D stereoscopic grading tools, collaboration features, noise reduction, motion blur effects, and HDR grading. As someone who doesn't currently need any of them things or even know what they are, I think that it's fine, and especially since most people are not going to be using such advanced features. But if you do need them advanced features, you will of course need to spend the money on the studio version of Resolve. Even though Resolve has a paid version, the version that is probably most popular is the free one, so for that I'm going to give both iMovie and DaVinci Resolve a point for the price, since free is always a great amount to spend. The next thing that I want to talk about is platform support. Being made by Apple, iMovie is of course Apple exclusive, meaning that you can only use it on Apple devices, but the good thing about it is that you can not only use it on a Mac, but also on an iPad and on an iPhone. Now of course, the best version to use is the Mac version, but if you're on the go and need to edit a video quickly, then the iPad version or the iPhone version are still pretty good as they still let you cut, trim, add transitions and add titles and effects like the Mac version does. and even though it is kind of harder to do on a smaller screen, you can still do it. In contrast, DaVinci Resolve is more sensible in terms of what platforms you can use it on. It can be run on Mac, Windows or Linux. I think that that alone makes Resolve probably a more attractive software as most people who are going to want to edit a video are likely using a proper computer, not their iPhone or iPad. Sorry Apple. <laughs> And that means that for this round, Resolve wins the point, making the score 2-1. That all being said, let's move on to the actual experience when you're using each software, and let's begin with how easy it is to use each of them. Although both iMovie and DaVinci Resolve are free, the difficulty of using them is actually quite different. Of course, since iMovie is made by Apple, it means that it is so simple that even a child could probably use it, and the layout is very basic, with media on the left, the viewer playing on the right and the timeline on the bottom portion of your screen. This means that if you're a beginner, it's probably a better choice to go with, as it only keeps the essentials that you would need to edit a video and not much else that could confuse you. I personally found that once I'd used it for a while and mastered all of the controls, iMovie eventually got pretty limiting for me since its childlike interface held me back from doing more advanced maneuvers or checking more specific things. But considering for how long I used it for and for what I ended up doing with it, I think it has served me pretty well. On the other hand, Resolve is certainly not as simple to use as iMovie, but having used iMovie previously, it wasn't as scary as it seemed when I switched to it as it was relatively easy to adapt to the more advanced interface. On the left you have media, but you also have access to different folders on your device, and you can also sort them by name, date, or anything that suits you so that you can find stuff more easily. In the upper middle of your screen there are two sets of video, the selected media from the media pool on the left, and the current moment you are on the timeline on the right. And this is great since it means that you can look at your media in more detail right alongside your video. The timeline itself is on the bottom of the screen like on iMovie, but there are extra controls for each track on the left, 
and there are also more controls in how you want to use the playhead for cutting or selection and so forth. And even further down are the seven main sections that DaVinci Resolve is famous for. Media, Cut, Edit, Fusion, Color, Fairlight and Deliver. These sections are the central hub of Resolve. And although you don't need to use all of them every single time you edit a video in any particular order, they are certainly useful as they present you different versions of the layout that are specific to different types of actions you might want to do. For example, media is useful for importing videos and audio to use, whilst edit is best for organising all of your media into order and putting it into different tracks. Fusion is good for visual effects, whilst color is best for color grading and fairlight for editing audio. And finally, Deliver is of course for exporting. This low toolbar paired with all the extra metrics everywhere definitely make Resolve more advanced and better for fine tuning your edits and workflow to exactly how you want to have it. But in terms of how easy it is to use, iMovie is better even if the layout is basic in comparison. So for that, iMovie wins the point and the score is now an even 2-2. Now although ease of use is pretty important, another thing that is crucial when video editing is how well the software performs, especially when editing fairly large projects with many tracks in a higher resolution. For both iMovie and Resolve, I've used my iMac over here, which has an Intel i5 processor with 8GB of RAM and a Radeon Pro 555 with 2GB for graphics, and both of them run fairly okay, as my Mac isn't really the highest end computer out there. When editing an average sized video, which for me is about 9 minutes of 4K 30fps video with additional layered media and audio, I found that iMovie uses about 2GB of RAM, and the experience is a bit laggy but somewhat smooth. Lag in iMovie has sometimes got pretty bad to the point where I need to quit the app and reopen it, but most of the time after I do that, it will run smoothly again. However, this has ended up being done multiple times in a single editing session almost every single time I've used it, which isn't ideal as it can take a few extra minutes to fully close and then boot it back up again, and you also never know whether the last thing that you did was actually saved since iMovie handles all the saving by itself through autosave, which can be a bit dodgy. Another annoying thing that's happened to me with iMovie is that media has often just stopped showing up and been replaced with a media missing message and it has meant I've had to go and re-import the file to trim it all over again and put it back to where the broken file is. On average, it takes anywhere from about 15 to 30 minutes to export a 2GB 4K 30fps file, and that's if it decides not to get stuck halfway through, causing me to have to restart the whole thing. In contrast, with DaVinci Resolve, I can instead export a larger 3GB 4K 30fps video in around 10 minutes, which is definitely much better. Resolve also uses around the same amount of RAM as iMovie does at 2.1GB, and although sometimes I've had to quit when things get a bit laggy, in general the experience is much more refined and smoother, and there are less of these laggy moments and also no export problems whatsoever. And that means that for this round, Resolve wins the point and the score is now 3-2. Now that we've covered the main parts like the price, the ease of use and the performance, we can now get into what various effects you can add to videos using each software. Like I've said previously, iMovie is simple, and the same can be said for the effects that you can do with it. All the sections for adding effects are found along the top of the media area, and going along in order, there's audio, titles, backgrounds, and transitions. The audio section is pretty basic, you can add audio from your iTunes library or from Finder, and also add some pre-made comical sound effects as well. Apart from that, the only other audio related changes that you can make are adding voiceovers and raising the volume of any imported file to a maximum of 400% more than the original amount. Moving on, the title section is something that I've never really liked, as although you can change the fonts and the sizing, it's really difficult, if not impossible, to change the positioning of text without adding a ton of extra spaces and you also can't turn off any of the transitions, which stay whether or not you like them. I never really used the background section much, but it's basically just a set of images that you can use as placeholders to add a title over, and it's a nice idea, but I don't like templates much since they don't really end up being effective if everyone uses the same ones. The transition section is also kind of like the titles one, some good effects but you can't make your own custom ones. But again, it is nice that they have it there as not everyone wants to go through the hassle of making their own custom transitions and I guess it's all for the minimal experience which Apple wants to promise its users. 
even if it is annoying that you can't make your own ones. Other effects that you can do with iMovie involve using green screens to add a background behind a subject, changing the saturation and exposure using some sliders, as well as changing the crop of your video and adding a Ken Burns effect to any pictures. But other than that, there's not really much else that you can do. As you may have guessed, DaVinci Resolve seems like heaven when you compare what it can do to iMovie. If I'm going to be completely honest with you, I haven't yet discovered everything that it offers, as there's simply so much there. Like I said before when talking about the sections at the bottom, you can use the Fusion tab for making various visual effects. And although I haven't used it for anything myself yet, the good thing about Resolve is that there are tons of tutorials and tips on YouTube and elsewhere online, and you can learn from them to make some pretty effective ones. However, if you're new to Resolve and don't want to make everything yourself, you don't have to use the Fusion tab for transitions or titles or anything, since there are plenty of pre-made ones that you can change in the effects library found in the top right. And something that is really cool about DaVinci Resolve is that you can even download custom transitions and effects that other people have made to use in your own videos too. The color tab lets you of course change the color profiles of the media that you have, and it's certainly more advanced than iMovie's basic sliders. I don't really know many technical terms for color grading yet, so I'm not going to even try and pretend that I know what I'm talking about, but again, it is one of the things that you can experiment with at your own pace and use many tutorials if you need to. Blackmagic, the developers of DaVinci Resolve, are one of the best out there when it comes to color grading, and I've heard that Resolve's color tab is even used in Hollywood to fine tune films, so it must be pretty good. And finally, the Fairlight tab is for editing audio or music, but I find that even the basic sliders on the timeline are pretty good for raising and lowering the sound levels, with a decibel count instead of a simple percentage increase like in iMovie. Other than that, there are also many other specific metrics you can find elsewhere all around the edit section, as, such as how many frames per second are playing in the viewer to how loud the audio is with a coloured bar. Like I said, I haven't used everything in DaVinci Resolve yet, as some of it is just simply beyond me for now, but from what I can tell so far, the controls are certainly more advanced and it has more to offer than iMovie does, so for that, the Resolve definitely gets the point, making it 4-2. And that brings us to the conclusion. I think that Resolve is definitely a better software and even if it is a bit harder to use initially due to the complex interface it is hard to believe that it offers as much as it does for free. Don't get me wrong though, iMovie is still a great piece of software, especially for beginners, but the simplicity of it is what makes it harder to use once you start making videos which require more advanced fine tuning. I will certainly be using Resolve for editing videos for the time being, and hopefully this will mean that the overall quality increases with better color grading and better effects as I start to learn how to use them things. And I guess that brings us to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you're new here, make sure to subscribe as it really helps the channel out, and there are also a few good videos coming soon, so stay tuned. This is Textbooks here, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.